Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Physio. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a classroom layout and allocate students to tables or positions. So as you can see on the screen, I've already created one, which I'll recreate in a second. So we've got rows of desks with a chair and a table, and then the person who's sitting there is allocated through data graphics and shape data so just zoom in a little bit i've just replicated this so it's the same people all the way across but you can see there that you can see the names next to the person or next to the chair that they're sitting in now if i go to um, the view tab first of all put shape data on shape data all i've done is when you click on the chair if i can click on the chair you can see it says Ann Jones there, and that one will say Steve Green. So it's, I've just used shape data, and then on the data tab, I've gone to data graphics and created a new one. And basically, if I edit this one, you can see it's just using the name field. And then if I edit that, I've got rid of the label and it is sitting in the default position. So that's what I'm going to recreate very quickly on a separate sheet. I'll just cancel this off and just zoom this back out. So that's classroom one. It's, and I've got a background on it, by the way, for history. It says history G1 in there. If I zoom back in a little bit, you can see that. So on this sheet, classroom two, what I want to do is create a floor space. So what I've got is a office equipment. Let's look at these stencils I've got in this. So I've got quick shapes, I'm not going to use any of those, although I could, cubicles, office accessories, equipment, furniture, and walls, doors, and space, which is what I want first off. So space, and I want this to be a 10 meter space, 10 by 10, so I'm just going to put 10 in there, 10 meters. And then bring this back down so you can see the whole thing. Uh, I'll just get rid of that for a minute. Now you might have to change. If I go to design page setup, um, I've changed this page layout to fit exactly the same as the um, sheet. So you might, you might have to just play around with that. So what I need now is some tables. So if I go to office furniture, I've got a table there and let's let's do the dimensions on this table. So I need to go back to the view and the size and position. So this table is going to be 120 centimeters by 60 centimeters wide. And if I just leave that like that, actually, that's okay. Now, if you notice the shape data has got um, already got this stuff pre populated, so you can go into shape data. If I just right click on this data, define shape data, you can change this. You can delete these off if you don't want these extra ones. So, this is more to do with the table. Or you can create, your, you can delete all of that and just create your own. But I'm just going to use the name field here for, for putting the students' names in. I'll just cancel that for now. You can see how that works. So now what I need is a chair. There's a the chair. Bring that chair across. Tucked under. So I need to go back to home. Send that to the back. One click. And there we go. It's at the back. And then I'm just going to hold my shift key down and group these two together. So group. Group. And then what I need to do is put the data graphic on the chair. So if I click on the chair and go to data, advanced data graphics, create new. Now that's already been done. So if I use that one, but I'll create a new one just so you can see how it works because that's off, off, off the first drawing. So create new, new item. You select the field that you want to use. So I said name and then you select how it's going to sit. So I want it to be text. I don't want the label on it at all. I'm just going to say no or not show no label. Uh, I'm okay with that being on the right and then okay and then okay 
yes I do want to apply that and I get a little zero there if I zoom that in nothing there because there's no name here so if I put Steve Saxton that should appear on there when I click off that and then you can see it sitting there now I am going to just delete that off a minute because I don't want that copying across on all of them so now if I go back out and zoom back out what I now need to do is position these so if I click on that and move this down a little bit to there say now you'd know how many chairs and tables you need but I'm just gonna hold my control key down or I'll do control D for I'd rather hold my control key. I'll, I did control D there. I'll just do undo, undo. If you hold the control key down, you can just drag and position these. And you see that the lines... So if I just do four, it's giving you a bit more of a, a guide than control D would do. And then if I just hold the shift key down and select these, I can then do banks. And you can get them lined up as well. So I'll bring them down a little bit. Control key down and see the little plus symbol, let go, push it up again to however many banks you want. And just keep letting go, try not to knock it off too far, like so. So I've got five banks. Now to do the, um, the names for the people, you need to, even though this is a group, you need to click on the chair part of it. So I can now put um, Steve Saxton in there and then I'll just do the first line, click on the chair miss the chair there altogether click on the chair Dave Jones click on the chair Paul Smith and last one let's call this Rashid Mohammed two M's and like I said, you can get rid of these other things or change the names of these other shape data fields if you don't like them. Now I want to bring in a reception desk. Sit that in the front, ready for the teacher. And he gets a special chair or she gets a special chair. Spin that round. Oops, wrong one. So it's facing the class. Go back to home. Send that back. One click. Okay. So he's just sitting there nice and neat. Now what I want is some equipment. So if I go office equipment, I want a projection screen either side. So I can just sit that there and rotate it round. And then just position it, push it across to the other side as well. Here's my control key to copy that down. Just let's zoom that out a little bit to see where we are in the, in the room layout area. Okay, now if I go back up, in fact coming down I want to go for a, a door, so there's a door, now this is just a space so it doesn't snap into position so I'm going to have to rotate this and then sort of push it into position like that and then the door wants to open this way so I'll just move that that way and I also want to fill it red so you can see it, there's the door coming in, this projector is probably just about needs to move across a little bit and I'll push that one across a little bit and then what I want to do is put a big window in there and rather same same sort of thing so if this was a wall it would just snap into that wall but because it's um, just a space you have to sort of play around with it a little bit and again I want that to be fill I'm going to make the line fatter so you can see see the line for the window and then if you want that window to be representing a size you can just change that so if I put um, 1500 millimeters it makes it a bit longer or you can drag it into position or you can have multiple windows and for the background for this classroom you need to put this backgrounds now obviously if I change this background history G1 because they say this is history G2 I need to um, insert a background on this this one Let's go to design borders. Let's go for the same layout. So this one is background one. This is going to be history G2, let's say. So double click on that. History G2. 
Now, at the moment, Classroom 1, yeah, Classroom 1's got it on. Classroom 1's got G1, Classroom 2's got G2, so it's already snapped in to the right page. Now, this is obviously sitting over the top of it, so if I zoom this down a little bit, what I need to do on this is, remember this is a background history too, so it's not going to be affected by what I'm going to do now. Control A to select everything, and then just move the whole lot down a little bit. Not too far, let's see. Like so. So I'll just move that a few bit, few centimeters down so it's away from that. Now, if you don't want this fill, which I don't actually because that's messing up my background, I'm just going to go no fill at the top. I've still got my dimensions. And now, if I zoom that back in a little bit, yeah, it looks okay. So you've got your windows, you've got your doors, you've got projector, uh, teacher, no name for the teacher. Let's call him uh, Mr. Smith. My teacher was called Mr. Smith, one of them. Okay, so that's basically how you can do an office layout with data graphics showing your students who's sitting where. And if you have the shape data window open like this, you can just basically click on that. And see who's sitting where. Now, obviously, you'd over a term you would get to know these people quite well. But initially, when it's just the first day of a new year or something, you might not know who these people are. Or if it's for adult training, you definitely won't know if they're just coming in once a week, and it would take a while to get to know these people. So if you get people to sit in the same chair each time, you can do it like that. Equally, I could have selected the table. You've still got the name field there. And I could utilize that field for the shape graphic as well. But hopefully that gives some of you an idea how you can use Visio. Simple classroom layout. So hopefully that was of use to you and thank you for your time.